Hey, hi, how are you? So this is another weird tips video, but it's one that I was really inspired to make because, you know, summer heat's coming in and we're still dealing with six spiky round boy and we're probably going to be dealing with six spiky round boy for sadly a very long time. And something I've wanted to do for the longest time is do more tips and tricks and things like that for things that I enjoy. Things that I enjoy, such as I did one recently about like how to stay cool in the summer because, you know, I don't do well with heat. But you know something I do really, really enjoy that I'm very sad is gone. And I know some places are pushing this back until the like fall or the Christmas time. And I'm sorry, I'm still not really excited or going to go to any high, um, high populated areas for the rest of the year. I'm just not. I, I, I know a lot of people are, and they're excited, and they're like, oh, the worst is over, and it's not, and I, you know, I'm not going into it. The whole point of this is I wanted to make positive videos, and I wanted to make videos and stuff I wanted to do. So, something I love, if you're surprised, surprised, I am a giant Renaissance fan. I love medieval fantasy, I love high fantasy, I love medieval shows, I love period shows, movies, all that jazz. I love it all. I love going to the Ren Fair, and as long as my editing works out and my programs don't crash for the bazillionth time, or I have rendering issues for the bazillionth time, I will slap pictures of me throughout the years going to the Ren Fair on screen because I love it and I feel within my element and I've been going since middle school. Um, granted, I sadly did not go every year, but I went nearly every year, if not more than once a year. But I didn't get to go last year and I definitely, sadly, uh, for obvious reasons, I'm not going this year. But a lot of people I know didn't go to the Renaissance Fair. And if you guys are new here, hi. I like making videos that have to do with things I want to see and or do and or videos that I would have liked to have seen when I was younger, getting into things, learning things to help me out. So that's why this is here. So got my little paper ASMR. My air conditioner just turned on to, you know, signal that the heat wave is getting back here. And let's just uh, get into it. So the first thing I have that's really important is you have to research and see what kind of person you are. A Renaissance fair is not like a craft show. It's not like an. It's not like a con. It's not like a car show. A Renaissance fair is a very different world. It like literally feels like a world if you go to a good one. I've heard of bad ones, but the one I've always gone to is the Southern California Renaissance Pleasure Fair, and that's that's what it's called, and. That's the one I always go to because it's the closest one to me. I know there's a big one in Texas. I know there's a big one in like multiple states. I know some states have multiple. I know my state has one in Northern Cali and one in Southern Cali. They might have another one that I, I just don't know about. But again, I'm only talking about the Renaissance Pleasure Fair. That's what I'm used to. That's where I usually go. But I know there's like big ones in Georgia, Tennessee, just the works. The works. And you can find videos of them online and pictures and stuff. But you need to research on whether or not you're going to have fun at a renaissance fair because there are a lot of people I know, I'm one of them, where I don't really like going outside sometimes. I like being able to like, you know, go outside and explore and do things like that, but I normally like doing it when it's not, you know, the dead of summer and everyone's dying from the heat. But another thing too is uh, in Southern California, most places, I hate saying it, are pretty ugly. We don't get a lot of nice, like, views that a lot of people have in like other nice states i know it's not everywhere but like i i do i do and am hi editing me here uh when i went to say that we have places that are pretty ugly i want to clarify uh for like normal people there are a lot of really high functioning rich areas that are beautiful in southern california but if you're not willing to shell out you know 20 30 dollar parking just to park your car or you know a nearly 100 dollar uber trip to get there uh it ain't really worth it and what i was meaning by this clip is that i was saying how like outside public areas even a lot of our walking trails out here are very bland and basic bitch unless you go to like a national park walking trail which are very rare and far in between and usually what we get is desert 
and dirt. We don't get a lot of like the greeneries that you get when that, that's so that was my intention. Sorry for the miscommunication. Let's keep going. That's great grammar. Wow, Michelle. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm already stumbling. I'm really jealous of people who live in like Washington, Oregon, and they have like beautiful foresty views. Same with like Tennessee, you know, and like Carol, like the, the Carolinas and everything and like places I visited when you have like beautiful views and like you can have beautiful yards and it's like that stuff that always makes me like, I don't know, reminisce. So when I like going to the Renaissance Fair is even though it's still in Southern California, it's on like a man-made lake side. They like set up everything. So you do feel like you're in a whole other place. You don't exactly feel like you're at a fair, like a county fair, but it is similar to one. And so when I do research, I mean, look into what kind of shows are in your Renaissance Fair. Look at what kind of vendors you're going to have. Look at what kind of food vendors you're going to have. Look at what kind of events. Look at ratings. These are things you have to do when you go to a Renaissance Fair, especially if you've never been to one before. Because some fairs are so big, you literally can't do everything in one day. There are other fairs that are so small that you can do everything in like, you know, half a day and stuff like that. And you need to do that research. So you need to see if your money is like worth going and or if you want to go multiple times. Like I said, I would do my best to try to go at least two times a year, if not three. I love the Renaissance Fair, but many times when I was younger, I only got to go like once a year because it's very expensive. Another thing on doing research is... At events like this, tickets are always, always more expensive at the gate. When you get there the day of and you buy tickets at the gate, they are going to be more expensive. You will be so surprised how many times Renaissance fairs do deals through. And like, I know people hate Facebook groups, but you find them out through Facebook groups and other things. You can get so many deals like where they won't really advertise it. You have to ask for it. Like I remember for years you could go to a CVS and you would get like $15 knocked off your Renaissance Fair ticket if you bought your ticket at a CVS. And it was like, I know it's really weird and it wasn't even a CVS like by the fair, you know, but like things like that. So you need to look into that so you can look into that. The next thing I have is you need to be able to bring money. I, I, people debate like, well, you don't technically. You're right. If you're a big Renaissance fan, fan like I am and you're already buying like a season pass or something granted yeah you can just park and like have a good day at the fair if you're going to go to the fair like four or five times you don't have to bring money every single day in that sense and most often they do allow you know outside food uh, outside drink and stuff like that because they are usually really hot and humid so they usually don't stop you there but you want to bring money. You want to bring money. And I would say, and this is going to be a big price tag, but if you're especially going for only one day, you're going to want to save up, not including ticket price, at least $200 US. Might be like, oh my God, Michelle, it's so much money. But here's the thing. When you get into the fair, besides the shows, nothing's free. The rides aren't free. The food's not free. The music's not free. Well, I mean, okay, technically the music's free because, like, you can listen to it. But there's so many things you're going to want to do. You're going to do the rides. You're going to want to try the food. You're going to want to get, like, you know, henna or makeup or something. Or just see all the beautiful artisans and all of their beautiful crafts and everything. You're going to want to spend money. You're going to want to spend money, like I said, unless you're a giant Renaissance fan where you go multiple days. And in that sense, you're usually going to bring money. But another thing with the bringing money is it is like a fair many of the places take cash they do not take card a lot of them are a lot more like lenient now a lot more of them take it but i remember like when i started like they did not take card like almost none of them took card so you want to bring cash and if you are dressing up which i like dressing up which if i was able to get the pictures on screen you'll see it um i like dressing up when you dress up you can actually get like bags and little costume things so you can like keep your stuff in theme and still be safe. Also, if you are above the age of eight, uh, 18, if you're above the age of 21, bring your ID, bring your ID just to be safe because most places are going to check you even if you're very clearly not 21. Um, I've had that happen to friends of mine who are almost in their 30s where they do not look like they're 21. They look like they're in their 30s, but they've still been carded. And if you don't have your ID, they won't buy you. The, they won't give you the boost. doesn't matter if you look like an adult or not. Some of them are policy. Some of them have people who go through just to like make sure they're checking for ID. 
So that's not a big thing, because you're going to want to, like, try the meads and things like that. Again, if you're above the age, because, oh, I'm not a big mead drinker, but I love getting mead at the fair. You know, obviously when I was an adult, like, not when I was in middle school. But that's something you want to do, and people be like, well, why do you want to bring money? Why do you want to do that? Because, let's be real, all right? I'm going to be 100% honest here. You don't want to go in costume, in character, taking in all the beautiful music, all the beautiful scenery, all the beautiful things, and then pull out a peanut butter and jelly sandwich while you're watching other people eat, like, giant turkey legs and, like, sausage on cheese and, like, fruit ice and stuff. It it pulls you out of it a little bit. You're going to want to try the food. You're going to want to try the drinks. You're going to want to do this and that. Again, no one's going to stop you from bringing, at least, again, the one I'm going to, no one's going to stop you from bringing in snacks and food. It is good to bring snacks and food. Another thing I have down here is because it's so hot, a good thing to do is to have two water bottles if you can, or I say water bottles obviously um i am a girl it is easier for me to like hide more modern stuff in my skirts when i dress up like i can have like you know like a a bag under my skirts that still go with my costume and stuff and i i've been like wanting to make a new renaissance fair costume like all on my own like i want to actually make one and stuff but get a uh because you can have a lot of people have like like hollowed out horns or like old timey like water jugs my husband and i have some of those we have some like water sacks and stuff and so what we'll do is we'll put like water in those and then we'll like get a like a plastic water bottle or a reusable water bottle that we can hide somewhere and we will freeze it so we can have colder water because at these events they do have drinking fountains they do have free things but usually the drinking fountains suck i i always hate this is a big pet peeve of mine when it comes to like any public event or a a park or something when they have a fountain but like there's like no pressure so you kind of like have to like you know suck on the fountain to get water out because one of those like well technically it does have water i bring a water bottle bring this and that and you know if you can't like find a like period appropriate or like make your own thing that's fine too you're gonna see a lot of people in costume with their cell phones out and sunglasses and other stuff when you know sometimes it just gets a bit too much so that's fine too but a frozen water bottle will be your best friend I am serious here, especially if you live in, like, where I live, where it's always in the summer, so you're, like, roasting in the heat. So, that's another one. And, uh, again, with the money thing is you want, like I said, you want to take in the sights and the sound. One year when I went, uh, I think it was the last year I went, actually, there was this, uh, I I don't know the instrument, I'll try putting it on screen, but there was this beautiful uh, musician, and she had, like, four CDs that were all her own CDs, I need to find them. They're in a box somewhere. And when I move computers, I don't have her music saved onto this computer. It's saved on my old computer. But her music was beautiful. So I bought all of her beautiful, like, romantic, you know, um, medieval era music. And, again, want money to do that. I also, as an independent myself, I like supporting other people. And while a lot of those places do have, like, sound clouds, downloadable things here and there, it's nice with the aesthetic and the appeal of the show because the entire fair is a show you know to like actually have physical media and things like again you can have like they have like they have artisans they have chain mailers uh the pendant that i always draw myself in that i'm always wearing in my vlogs my little coin i always get a pressed coin whenever i go to the renaissance fair it's been a tradition since i was in middle school i get either a silver one which are usually pretty expensive or a, a bronze one. The bronze ones are usually like $15. The silver ones are around 50 because it's like actual silver. And I believe the most expensive one you can get is like a gold one, which is like $100, but it's like a, like a solid gold coin. So I've never gotten a gold one. It's one of my like things to eventually get a gold one. But again, uh, I don't have that kind of money to just put on a necklace when I want to buy other things at the fair and see if things at the fair. And so another tip when it comes to the shows, there's usually some sort of animal show where they have, like, you know, they'll have wild animals, they'll have, like, birds. Birds are the big one I usually see. When you go to the bird shows, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, and they warn you that people are stupid. Do not bring food when you sit down at those shows. The animals will try to attack you for the food because they are trained to go after food. When they do all the tricks and stuff, it's because, like, one of their handlers is holding a bit of meat. So you'll see people where they'll be like, hey, if anybody's got turkey legs... Or if anybody's got, you know, like, meat and sandwiches or anything that looks like meat, put it away. Or just chill out. Don't 
heated at the show, but I, I, I digress. You know, you want to take in the shows, the jousting's really fun, and my next one, and this is my, my biggest one, and it's, I think, I think it's where I'm going to end it, because I think it's all I have here for notes, right? Or did I write something else down? Nope, that's it, I have notes. So the, the next one is also really, really important. Are you ready? There's going to be day drinking. There's going to be very crass talk. I'm not saying don't bring your little kids because when I eventually have crotch goblins, I'm bringing them to the Renaissance Fair. But I also know, because I've been to Renaissance Fairs, if you're like a new parent or you have young kids and it's like, I love medieval and fantasy stuff and I'd love to take my kids into that. Okay, I must say something really, really serious right here. The actors don't care. And by that... Some do, but there's a lot of adult talk. There is a lot of adult drinking. There is a lot of people, you know, getting frisky. Now, I've never seen people do the nasty at a Renaissance fair, but my friends have at other fairs, and they know that people do it. And when I was a kid, and by kid I mean when I was in high school, still technically underage, so I consider myself a kid, even though I was a teenager, a friend of mine and my brother, my little brother at the time, went to like we were like looking at the shops and looking at things and we accidentally found an snm booth and i do mean accidentally we didn't know that was it so we didn't know what the hell was going on we were just looking at the stuff because like it like it like took a minute for like my teenage brain to like register what i was seeing you know it sounds dumb but the internet was a different place from when i was in high school to where it is now and then like when i realized it a lady like literally was like oh no who led we ones in the shop? And I was like, what? And there was a dude, like, he was clothed, but he literally was, like, getting flogged. And I was like, oh! And my friend's like, oh! And my sibling was like, what is going on? And they, like, pushed us out of the booth. Like, because they're not closed off booths. They're, like, cloth booths. And while it was in the back, it wasn't, it wasn't hidden. It's why we were able to find it, because we were looking through the shops and stuff. And so, I'm just saying... Be prepared for that. Be prepared for people to be crass. Be prepared for people to say some politically incorrect stuff because they're in character for a medieval fair. Just be prepared. Be prepared is all I'm saying. That and the day drinking. Because there are some people that go to the Renaissance Fair just like when I used to work car shows. They go for the day drinking. They don't care much about the atmosphere. They go for the day drinking. So be prepared for that. It's going to be like... 8 in the morning, and there's going to be people drunk, passed out by a tree already. That's just going to be a thing you need to prepare for. Now, am I saying the entire fair is full of alcoholics and drunks? No. Am I saying you're going to see people just stumbling over like their feet? No. But you're, you're going to see it. You're going to see it, like one or two wandering around that's pretty clear. Like I said, they have mead and the other alcohols and the fun time, and they have like pub crawls and things like that. One of my, my big adult things, again... I'm responsible, YouTube. Don't hurt me. But, like, one of my big things is I want to get a season pass one year. And, like, I want to have, like, a shopping day. And then I want to have, like, a pub crawl day with, like, some of my friends in costume. And then maybe a show day. So that way... Because there are shows that go along the same time. That's why I also say do your research. Because, you know, you might want to see the, the, the epic drum show... Or you might want to see the Hawk show. And that might be like three times a day, but while they're three times a day, oh no, jousting's during one of them, and jousting's only two times a day. So that's why I'm saying do your research on the fair in your areas or fairs you want to go to. You know, travel to them if you can, if you really want to. And you don't have to be in costume. You're going to want to. They also have like costume rental places. I personally don't recommend the costume rental places. Only because if you're gonna like eating food and drinking and like you know debauchery, you if you damage the costume, that could be anywhere between five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for a costume that you're gonna have to now pay for if you like ruin it. And they keep your clothes, so like you're kind of screwed. So that's why I recommend making them. You can actually make your costumes really easily off of thrift store stuff. Um, when I eventually make my new one, I'll probably do a video on it. Don't expect it anytime soon. I'm slowly collecting stuff for that. Because, again, I don't make money off of that. That's just something I just enjoy doing. So, uh, when I do that, I might do, like, how I thrifted this or made this and that. Because I'm also, like, not a seamstress. I'm not going to claim I am. But making your own costumes are fun. Getting into character are fun. Getting inspiration is fun. And 
So, yeah, that's just some tips and tricks that I've learned going to the Renaissance Fair, and I miss the Renaissance Fair so much. And I can't wait for next year when I get to go again. And let me know if you guys have ever been to a Renaissance Fair or, you know, anything along those lines. And if you have any tips or advice down below, I'd love to read them. I'd love to see them. And thank you, as always, to my amazing Patreon patrons. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. I love you so, so much. I do my best to make new videos every Wednesday for the new people here. All of my links are in my social media link tree link down below. If you want to follow me there. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. Bye.